Hello everybody, in this video we'll be discussing the concept of enthalpy of formation and how it relates to the idea of bond energies. This is a relevant syllabus dot point. So what is enthalpy change of formation? Enthalpy change of formation refers to the enthalpy change of the formation of a substance from its constituent elements in standard states. This is best explained by using an example. The formation of methane from its constituent elements, which includes carbon and hydrogen, the standard state refers to the state of the substance in standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius, so room temperature, and one atmospheric pressure, or roughly 100 kilopascals of pressure. So in this case, the constituent element of methane in standard state will include the carbon in the solid state, as well as hydrogen gas in the gaseous state. These are the natural states of the two substances under standard conditions. The formation of methane from these two reactants would involve changes in energy. And the enthalpy change of this particular reaction, that is the formation of methane, is known as the enthalpy change of formation. And the enthalpy change formation for this reaction, for methane, is minus 75 kilojoules per mole, meaning every mole of methane that is formed from carbon solid and hydrogen gas, it will release 75 kilojoules of energy. Sometimes the enthalpy of formation symbol can have a degree or a zero sign as a superscript. This is known as a standard enthalpy change of formation, which is a value that's measured under standard conditions. So again, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric of pressure. So in this case, if we decide to measure the enthalpy change of formation for methane under standard conditions, then this will be referred to as the standard enthalpy change of formation, which also happens to be minus 75 kilojoules per mole. The enthalpy change of formation of different compounds will have different values, meaning different amounts of energy changes will occur when you're forming different compounds from their respective elements in standard states. For example, the formation of an ionic compound such as sodium chloride from its standard state, that is sodium metal in solid state, and chlorine gas in its gaseous state would have an enthalpy change formation of negative 411 kilojoules per mole. So every time we form one mole of sodium chloride from these respective reactants, we'll release 411 kilojoules of energy. Likewise, the enthalpy of formation can also be calculated and measured for more complex covalent substances. In this case, the formation equation for ethanol, that is C2H6O, will involve three different elements in their standard states. Again, carbon in the solid states, oxygen and hydrogen gas, both of which are diatomic gases in standard conditions. The enthalpy change of this particular reaction is negative 270 kilojoules per mole. So when we are forming one mole of ethanol from these respective elements in the standard states will release 270 kilojoules of energy. Now one very important concept I want to highlight is that although enthalpy of formation also applies to pure elements, that is substances that only contain one particular element, for example diatomic oxygen gas, the enthalpy change of formation is actually zero. Now sometimes the formation of these pure elements may be accompanied by an enthalpy change value, for example, minus 500 kilojoules per mole. Be very mindful and understand that this is not the enthalpy change of formation, because enthalpy change formation only refers to the formation of a compound from its respective element in standard states. This energy change or change in enthalpy value is actually the bond energy associated with the oxygen gas molecule when we are forming the bond between two oxygen atoms. It is not the enthalpy change of formation. Now let's quickly remind ourselves and revise what bond energy is. Bond energy refers to the amount of energy that is required to break a bond. Let's go back to the example methane. The average bond energy of a carbon to hydrogen bond in a methane molecule is 413 kilojoules per mole. This value means every time one mole of a CH bond is broken, it will absorb or require exactly 413 kilojoules of energy. This is important because when we are breaking apart a molecule of methane, we need to break these carbon to hydrogen bonds. To calculate the total amount of energy that's required to break a methane molecule apart, 
We simply multiply the average bond energy of one of these carbon to hydrogen bonds by one, two, three, four, a total of four of such bonds. So when we multiply 413 by four, we'll get a total energy required of 1,652 kilojoules required for every mole of methane molecule. The idea of bond energy also applies when we are forming a molecule such as methane. If we require 1,652 kilojoules of energy to break one mole of methane, then when we form one mole of methane, we will release exactly the same amount of energy by forming these carbon to hydrogen bonds. So let's summarize the relationship between enthalpy change of formation and bond energies. As we discussed earlier, enthalpy change of formation refers to the enthalpy change of the formation of a compound from its constituent elements in standard states. So that particular reaction involves the breaking of the bonds of these constituent elements. And when we are breaking bonds, this is an endothermic process. The amount of energy that's required will be equal to the bond energies of the elements. Of course, when we are talking about enthalpy change formation, we are obviously referring to the formation of a substance, which is the product. When we are forming the product, the formation of the bonds in the product will release a certain amount of energy according to the bond energies of that particular compound. And this is exothermic because we are forming bonds. So in the example of the formation of methane, we need to break apart the bonds of the reactants, which would be endothermic, and the formation of bonds in the product that is methane will be exothermic. The exact energy changes will be equal to the bond energies of each substance. So therefore, the enthalpy change of formation is really the net changing energy, either endothermic or exothermic, from the bonds being broken and formed respectively. That's explained the role of bond energy in the calculation of this enthalpy change of formation value more specifically. In order to form the molecule methane, the first step that must occur is the sublimation of solid carbon. Sublimation refers to the conversion of solid state matter into gaseous state without going through its liquid state. This step is endothermic and it will involve its own enthalpy change. So this is 721 kilojoules for every mole of carbon converted from solid into a gas. This is known as the enthalpy of sublimation. The second step that occurs is the dissociation of hydrogen gas into its individual hydrogen atoms. This requires the breaking of the covalent bonds inside hydrogen gas molecules to, in order to form individual hydrogen atoms. The total enthalpy change of this step depends on the bond energy of the hydrogen to hydrogen bond inside each hydrogen gas molecule. The bond energy of this bond is 438, and because we're breaking two of such molecules, the total enthalpy change will be double this, which is 876 kilojoules required to form four atoms of hydrogen. Once we have formed gaseous state of carbon and gaseous state of dissociated hydrogen atoms, the third step is the formation of bonds between the two elements to form the product that is methane. This step is exothermic because we're forming new covalent bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms. The exact energy change involved in this exothermic step is equal to the bond energy value of the carbon to hydrogen bond, which is negative 413, multiplied by four of such bonds. And this is equal to minus 1,652 kilojoules released when you form one mole of such methane molecules. So in summary, the first two steps are endothermic. And the third step here when you're forming the actual bonds in the product is exothermic. Notice how bond energy plays a very important role in the energy changes of the three processes. Let's combine the values together. We have the endothermic enthalpy change values of the first two steps and the exothermic enthalpy change value of the third step. When we add them together, we'll get the total net change in enthalpy of the formation of methane from its constituent elements in standard states. This is the enthalpy change of formation. And again, you can see the bond energies that were calculated in the breaking of hydrogen gas and the formation of methane are included in the calculation of the enthalpy of formation. Okay, let's go through a few examples to consolidate the ideas that we explained in this video. 
Write a chemical equation for the formation of ammonia. Ammonia is a covalent molecule with a formula of NH3 from its constituent element in standard states. So ammonia in a standard state is a gas. So standard state refers to 25 degrees and one atmospheric pressure, which is approximately 100 kilopascals. The formation equation involves forming the compound from its constituent elements, which is nitrogen and hydrogen, in standard states. So nitrogen in a standard state is N2 gas, so diatomic nitrogen gas, and hydrogen in a standard state exists as H2 gas, so again diatomic, also a gas, and this is the equation. Now before we continue, let's balance this equation. We have two nitrogen on the left-hand side and only one on the right-hand side. So we can add a two in front of the ammonia. This will change the number of hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side to six, but we can easily balance this by multiplying the hydrogen gas on the reactant side by three. So now we've got two nitrogens on both sides and six hydrogens on both sides. Use the bond energy values provided in the table as well as the enthalpy of sublimation of carbon, which is this value here, to calculate the enthalpy formation for carbon monoxide. Now, whenever you're asked to calculate the enthalpy formation of a compound, let's first write the equation to represent the reaction that is the formation of the compound. So carbon monoxide is CO, and that's a gas under standard conditions. To write the reactants in this equation, we should write carbon in a standard state, which is solid, and followed by oxygen in a standard state, which is O2 gas. To balance it, we can times two with the carbon monoxide and times two with the carbon to balance the number of carbon atoms. The enthalpy change of this reaction is the enthalpy of formation, which is what we are trying to find. So to find the enthalpy of formation, let's consider the energy processes that will occur in order to transform these two reactants into the product. The first thing that must occur is the sublimation of the carbon. Okay, so carbon going to carbon gas. Now the reason for that is because the carbon in the product is in a gaseous molecular state. And originally the carbon was, is in a solid state. Luckily for us, the enthalpy change of this reaction is already given, 714 kilojoules per mole. But because we have two of carbon solid, we should times this value by two, which gives us 1428 kilojoules for two moles of carbon solid sublimated into carbon gas. The second process that will occur, it will be the dissociation of the diatomic oxygen gas molecules to form two lots of oxygen, where the bonds between the two oxygen atoms is broken. The enthalpy change of this reaction will be positive, meaning it's endothermic because it involves the breaking of the oxygen to oxygen double bond. We have one of these molecules in the equation, so the enthalpy change of this reaction is simply 495 kilojoules. We don't need to multiply this by two or any other number because we are only using one mole of oxygen gas. Once we have formed the gas to step carbon and the gas to step of dissociated oxygen atoms, the third step is the formation of the bond between them that is forming the carbon monoxide molecule. So write down formation of CO. And the enthalpy change of this reaction will be equal to the bond energy of the carbon to the oxygen triple bond between them. Since we're forming two moles of carbon monoxide, the enthalpy change of this will be negative because the bond is being formed, therefore we're releasing energy, multiplied by two. So this gives us minus 2,144 kilojoules of energy released for two moles of carbon monoxide. Now when we add these three values together, the net enthalpy, which is the enthalpy of formation of this reaction, is equal to minus 221 kilojoules. And this is for two moles of carbon monoxide. If you want to find the molar enthalpy of formation, that is for one mole of carbon monoxide, you can divide this by two, which will give us a value of approximately 100 and 10.5 kilojoules per mole of carbon monoxide formed. Okay, let's go through the third example. Consider the formation of water from hydrogen to oxygen gas. So this is the formation of water from hydrogen to oxygen gas in the standard states, and the enthalpy change of this reaction 
is the enthalpy of formation. We can use the bond energy values in the table to calculate the molar enthalpy of vaporization for water. So the enthalpy of formation, which is minus 292 kilojoules per mole, now because we're forming two moles of water, we should times this by two, this is equal to the sum of all the energy processes or changes that occur to get from hydrogen and oxygen gas to liquid water. Now, to break apart the hydrogen and oxygen gas molecules, we need to consider their bond energy values. To break apart two moles of hydrogen gas, we'll consider the bond energy of the hydrogen to hydrogen single bond, so 436 times by 2, because we have two of these molecules. So I'll just write down here, this is for the H2, two of them, plus the energy absorbed to break one oxygen to oxygen double bond, and we just times this by one here because there's only one of such molecule of oxygen gas, so just O2 here. And we also need to consider the formation of hydrogen to oxygen covalent bonds inside a molecule of water. Now in one molecule, there are two such bonds. One bond will release 464 kilojoules of energy, which is why I put a negative in front of this, times by two of such a bond in one molecule of water. And because we are forming two moles of water molecules, we'll times this by two again. So this is the formation of oxygen gas, two of these. Now keep in mind that my final water product is in a liquid state. So we should also consider the enthalpy change involved in the condensation of gaseous water, which is over here, into liquid water. Now once we rearrange this equation to find the enthalpy change of condensation of water, we'll get a value of negative 95 kilojoules. The question is asking us to calculate the molar enthalpy of vaporization. Now recall, condensation is when you go from gaseous water into liquid water. Vaporization is the opposite process, going from liquid to a gaseous state. So the enthalpy of vaporization of water is simply positive 95 kilojoules. Now in this case, this was for not just one mole, but two moles of water molecules. So this is not yet the molar enthalpy. Molar enthalpy refers to how much energy is required or released for one mole of the substance. Therefore, the molar enthalpy of vaporization is equal to positive 95 divided by 2, which gives us a value of positive 47.5 kilojoules per mole of water converted from liquid to a gaseous state. This is the molar enthalpy of vaporization. Now this concludes the video on enthalpy of formation and bond energies. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.